Welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we're talking about lots of things that are sports. Because this is a sports show, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the ALCS, the NLCS. We're also going over how Jameis Winston is such a big dummy. And of course, we have a lot of football news. Lots of it. Because it is football season. And we're giving you an update on the Words From My Face Fantasy Football League. Stay tuned. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cup, Global Cup crossover needs to happen. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Words to My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. Ah, there's nothing that wakes you up a little bit more than having that chainsaw. I mean, fear is, it, it sends adrenaline, and then, you know, it, it, it wakes you up pretty well. So if it's 10 o'clock at night where you are, which that's what time it is here. I'm not sure why you're giving the shifty eyes on that. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> it really is 10 o'clock. Hey, we started on time. So, uh, you know, that doesn't happen that often. I, I just like giving the shifty eyes. I think people like to see it. I think I need more of it. Nah. Go ahead and walk me. He's going to walk me. I'm pinned down! No, that, that's pinned what down. Down. I guess we're pinned down. But, yeah, like I said, tonight is a sports show. So let's start it off this week the same way we started off every sports show night. And that is with the Chewbacca Chainsaw. And notice I just said the Chewbacca Chainsaw because nobody's getting an, a good award. And this is going to be a Chewbacca Should Chainsaw. And you heard about it a little bit in our intro. And I think Chewbacca Should Chainsaw... Jameis Winston this week. He has probably cost himself about twenty million dollars in draft. I mean, just just NFL money uh, because he has recently been he's under investigation by FSU, his Florida State University, um, for possibly getting paid to uh, sign memorabilia. Because recently, now the number that first came out was about 900 items showed up on this authenticating website to be authenticated, and they were authentic. Um, and that kind of sent out some red flags. It's like, who just suddenly has 900 items to be authenticated all at once? Mm. It's not very, very common at all. Because every now and then, and I had some weird window pop up, sorry. Uh, every now and then, you'll, you will get the college players, you know, stay behind practice, maybe sign a couple things here and there. And so you'd have a couple, maybe 100, maybe 200 if you're a really popular player, pop up at any given time. Um, now, he has 900. Now, that number has since skyrocketed to about 2,000 a day. So, hmm, something hmm. fishy's going on there. He's now, very dedicated. Yeah, and, and one of the, the, the big, big red flags that came out today was that a lot of the merchandise was in sequen sequential order. So it was like <laughs> helmet number one, helmet number two through 500 he signed. And yeah, it's kind of rare to get a random group of 500 people just to somehow have the 500 in a row numbers. You know, usually that means you sat down and you signed a whole bunch in a row. And that's also what this one guy was saying, that all the signatures were in about the same place. They were about the same. And if you're sitting there, you know, signing for fans, you're just kind of quickly signing, just signing anywhere, talking to people, not paying attention. And it doesn't look good right now. Now, Florida State recently dropped from number one to number two, not because they lost a game, just because their strength of schedule is not so great. But, um, yeah, they're, they're saying that, Winston's still going to play, uh, which is kind of interesting, seeing as how they suspended him for jumping up and cursing on tables, and yet when he's under serious investigation, it seems like, for probably getting paid. I mean, I don't know who, out of the is goodness this, of their heart. Is this against the, uh, the NCAA rules to get paid for merchandise? Yes, to get paid at period for... is, is against NCAA rules. So if somebody says... A memorabilia broker says, hey, Jameis, why don't you sit down? We'll pay you a couple thousand dollars. You sign a whole bunch of things, and we'll sell them. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's I mean, that's though, that goes into that territory we've talked about before of... Um, it, it, the NCAA rules against getting paid for playing the sport in any way other than scholarship sometimes is a little bit ridiculous. 
Like, yeah, no, no, I can block I, them, the players from getting the the money from EA, right? It's like I, I agree. It's, I it's think that they likeness. should have more compensation than they get because they do bring in a lot of money. At least but you know this. This is blatantly like this, against the rules, right? Now. This is blatantly against the yeah, rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's stupid to. It's it is stupid to break the, the rules line. at this point. It, Yes, and and the big reason he's getting the Chewbacca shoe chainsaw is because, like I mentioned, he's going to lose a lot of money. Um, most people's draft boards, I'm going to go with Mel Kuyper's as the kind of, you know, the flagship draft board. He had him dropping from number three to number 25. I've seen places where he's dropped out of the, the top 25 into the second round, and your guaranteed money from dropping from three to 25 is about 20 million or so. So, yeah, he, you've just cost your 20, yourself $20 million. I don't know that they didn't pay you $20 million for all your signatures, but I doubt it. I highly doubt it, you know. Not and yet. Just, Maybe if he keeps going, he can make up the money. <laughs> I mean, but think about, like, the hand cramps and what would what would that do to his throwing hand if he had to sign that many things? Carpal tunnel? Huh? Eh? Which also, that though, might make you think. Maybe he didn't do Because we're talking about 2000. That's a lot of that's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, um, and do you think he would have sure done that not to get paid? Are we sure this is not a forgery? Uh, no, they were authentic. They were authenticated. A really they forgery? were official. Uh, it'd be a pretty darn good forger. But, um, yeah. He, maybe he gave his, his signature over and they scanned it and they have a computer that just does it exactly off of the scan that he gives. Okay, barring something that's never happened before. I got the text there. Okay. Yeah, the text there, but again, barring something that's never happened before, um, yeah, he's pretty stupid. Now, this isn't the first time we've heard of stupid stuff out of Jameis Winston. Like I said, we, we did a story on him jumping on a table and yelling out some profanities in the middle of the student union, which got him suspended for the Clemson game. Um, also, last year, he got caught shoplifting um, crab legs, if you remember that one. Oh, he yeah, I remember. Crab that, that was... Pants. Wait, 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 wait. The, both those things were him, so now he's on the a third strike here? Uh, no, he's on his fourth strike, if this becomes true, because his biggest and most serious allegation was a sexual assault allegation um, last Why year. Why is he still playing? Because um, uh, the sexual assault allegation was dropped, because uh, okay. there was not su substantial evidence to move forward. So, again, that's why I call it an allegation. All right, so what, what we're saying is up, clearly upstanding guy... Or victim of uh, conspiracies. Yeah, yeah, you know it'd have to be one of the two. <laughs> well, no, no, wait, hold on, no, no, no. Guy upstanding guy, vic who is a victim of conspiracies, or just a big, big dummy. Yeah. I'm gonna lead in towards the big, big dummy because one, one, two, maybe he's just a kid. He's being stupid. You know it happened. Wouldn't that be crazy though if We're he was a victim four. of a giant conspiracy? That would be very <laughs> interesting. Someone's like. <laughs> I'm going to not let that kid be a, a pro. Like, uh, you know. Let's do everything we can. Let's find every, like, possible thing for him to, to break a rule about. Yeah. It, it would be pretty crazy. And and now the other thing that kind of is funny to me, you have a team like Florida State letting Jameis Winston go out and play because, say what you will, even with all these allegations, he does not let that affect him on the field of play. He goes out there every week and plays at his Heisman winning level. Um, but then you have another player, uh, Todd Gurley, which is a very unfortunate name for a football player, Gurley. Yeah. And most people said he was actually the front runner for the Heisman this year. He's the running back out of Georgia who's been just spectacular. He got suspended indefinitely by Georgia while they're investigating similar allegations. So it's also funny that you see where Florida State doesn't need Jameis Winston as much because they're playing in a lot softer uh, ACC. The SEC Georgia team is like, nope, we're going to get rid of him. We don't want to. We're not going to stand for that. And they need him a lot more in that conference than I mean, because really the SEC is the NFL light, as I like to mm. call it. Um, but that's eh, funny. But Florida State will be playing uh, number five Notre Dame this weekend, so that'll be a big game. And I'm sure more will come out of this b before the weekend, because like I said earlier this week, it was 900 signatures that jumped up to 2,000 today. What's it going to be tomorrow? Who knows? So, I don't know. Let us know what you guys think. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. What's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Is he being conspiracized against? Is that a word? Conspiracized? It, it is, is now. now. <laughs> is there a giant conspiracy against James Winston, or is he just a big knucklehead? Uh, let us know. You know. Uh, and, you know, I don't even know how to roll that over to the next subject. It's not very easy to. 
kind of puts I'll, a damper I'll, I'll on my roll. Okay, okay. This better be relate to the next sub subject right now. Oh, well, it will be now. Kevin Durant, <laughs> he had surgery on his foot. They're going to have to reevaluate him in six six weeks. I think it was his foot. He had surgery. What? He's out for a while. Uh, don't worry. He just he wanted to take a break to give the rest of the league, you know, a little bit more of a fair shot. You know, somebody else might, you know, be able to be the MVP because he's going to be the MVP from now on. And he's also saving his strength for when he joins the Washington Wizards. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to go with. Is he getting a bionic foot? Is that it? Yes. Super bionic yeah, foot. technology. We will be built. Even though he could probably play without a foot and still be better than some most NBA players, that's I'm just gonna go with that. I'm just gonna go with that. You and not even like one of those cool like, you know, like Blade Runner blades. You know, just just without a foot. Hopping yeah, he'll just hop. Court. hop. He'll old. just hop. Be like oh, slam dunk. I'm a hopper. That's just because Kevin Durant's he's that good. He is that good. But uh, let's talk about the NBA and talk about um, recently. Uh, we talked about the new NBA deal, the TV deal that's gonna net them 2.66 billion annually a year, so that's a, almost triple the amount they'd gotten before. And then I heard LeBron James came out and said, okay, NBA, you've made your money. Now it's time to pay the players. Take care. You're being taken care of. Now you take care of us. Okay. Understandable. Their revenue goes up. So should the people who work underneath them. You know, mm -hmm. if American economics actually worked like that, this might still, you know, the, the wage gap might be not increasing exponentially instead of, you know, it might be decreasing. You got a little bit twisted up there, Brian. Yeah, but no, no, yeah, yeah. But people knew what I meant. The wage gap is going bigger instead of smaller, and that's because all the people at the top like to steal all the money. But that's neither here nor there. That's not sports. Actually, that is sports. Because this is the sports topic about the no, it's not going around. So okay, we're talking about actually. Dirk and LeBron came out and said, "Hey, uh, we think that 82 games is too much. You should probably, you know, lessen it." And this came out about because uh, the NBA How tried much out. It? Do we know? Well, yeah, yeah, I'll get to that. But this came out um, because Dirk came out. I mean, the, they did, did blah, 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 blah. But this came out because the NBA did this little experiment, you might say, um, and did one game, only one game, where they made it 44 minutes. They lessened each quarter by one minute. And they're kind of thinking about doing this because, hey, maybe that four minutes will actually help the players – wear better over the season, I guess? I, I don't really know. But so Dirk Nowitzki and LeBron came out and said, hey, don't shorten the games. It doesn't matter if I play two minutes or 50 minutes. Uh, if I'm out there, I'm out there. I'm already putting that strain on my body. How about you lessen the amount of games we, we play? Of the suggestions from Dirk Nowitzki was, instead of being 82 games, make it somewhere in the mid-60s. So drop, you know, 15, 20 games off the schedule which I can understand a little bit because about each team has to play 20 back-to-back -back games a year, which means they play one night and then they play the next night. Normally speaking, though, that's on their own home court, so they play you know, two nights in a row in their own home city. But no, I can also see why the owners would probably prefer the less games. Uh, owners? Not less games, the less uh, minutes yeah. situation to less games because now you're already in the stadium for all those games. And they're probably not making a whole lot of money off of you know four minutes worth of concessions, but yeah. they're still getting you in the stadium to buy that ticket. Well, and they already cut you off for the last quarter anyway, so their biggest seller, alcohol, is done by that point anyway. So. Yeah, but they're not taking four minutes off the last quarter. But, yeah, but I get what you're saying. The, yeah, whatever, but yeah. But yeah, so it just it, it sounded kind of funny to me that these guys who make their living off of other people enjoying what they do. This is kind of, you know, the stress relief. This is, you know, something to get average people's minds off of, you know, what's going on. This is their entertainment. They want to go ahead and say, eh, we're too hard working. We want to work less. It's like, really? You're playing a game for a living? And it's not even that physical of a game, to be honest with you. I mean, yes, it is physical. But think about the construction worker who works five days a week. You know, if there's a big job, he's working 10-hour days. Is that not more physical and more demanding than the NBA players? To be honest, I, I don't know because they're they're pushing their bodies a whole lot. I mean, these are athletes, right? And they're pushing yeah. their bodies to athletic limits. Yeah. 
So, I, I but they're know. also getting the best trainers, the best nutrition, the best care. Some of these guys sleep in hyperbolic chambers. I've never met a construction worker that sleeps in a hyperbolic chamber. Now, I, I don't know all that many. I just, I'm just saying. I've never met one that If does you're that. a construction worker, just in general, you can comment. But also, if you happen to sleep in a hyperbolic chamber, let us know. And let us know where you got your hyperbolic chamber. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds that's kind of cool. Yeah, it would be cool. I mean, those things are out there. I mean, NBA players. Uh, Gilbert Arenas was famous for using. He used to sleep in a hyperbolic chamber. You know, that's just a really oxygen-rich environment helps you heal faster. So, but in any case, I actually, I'm not. I'm okay with this idea. Nope. This idea of not lessening cool the games because yeah. I, and I'll tell you why. Because I've been saying too, and I think we've talked about it before. A lot of these sports do need less games. Like one of the things that makes football so great is that it's only 18 games a season. 16 games a season. Well, it depends on how far you go. We I always that assume is true. my team's going to go into the playoffs at least okay. two games. There you go. Okay. Cool. cool. And there was talk well, Even though you're a Redskins fan, so you should really you assume up. the opposite. We'll shut just, up. We'll just pretend We're going to go to... <laughs> Okay. We're making the playoffs. Yeah, so... Uh, but in any case, fine. 16 games uh, plus four preseason games, whatever. But 16 games, all that matter. They all matter a lot. So it's exciting. You want to watch every minute. You're interested in every game along the way as opposed to like baseball. We talked about how it has way too many games. Like You don't have to care about every game at all. And yeah. you can just like let it go for... A couple of weeks before you check up on what's going on there again, and say like, "Oh, well, now these last five games have made a difference, you know, or ten games that make a difference." And I get it, but but we're thinking about you know everybody's team being competitive. What about the people who watch their teams just for the sake of watching a sport, who just enjoy watching sports? I mean, uh, there's lots of sports uh, for that. Uh, uh, uh. Me, Maybe I enjoy even... watching sports. I just want to watch them. I don't care if it's you know, <laughs> like if if each team has something to play for necessarily. I do get what you're saying though. You make it each game a little more important, which should ramp up the competitiveness of each game. But you know, I just like watching sports. Don't take that away from me, people. Why? Why do you want to take that there away? Are other sports, Brian. All the yes. time. You can but even watch. That I don't really care about watching. I don't really watch hockey. Well, Not then you can watch Words from My Face episodes. But I'm doing them. <laughs> I need to do them, not watch Our them. It's about I... 48 minutes long. That's like another basketball game. <laughs> yeah, uh, granted. But without all those sports happening, our shows would shrink. So you need to reverse your argument. Reverse it. All right. It sounds like we need to really just uh, ramp up the, uh, I don't know, ultimate taser ball. Ultimate Taser Ball. That's right. But I do want to say Thanks. one Look quick thing is Dirk Nowitzki did make one good point, and I really don't like Dirk Nowitzki very much. Um, but he did make he he did say that they should probably take away some of the timeouts because basketball, if you watch it towards the end of the game, like the last thirty seconds can take literally twenty minutes, um, and that is one thing that kind of ruins the speed of the game. Mm. But uh, yeah, out of what they said, I think it's hooey. I want more games. I don't want less games. Actually, I don't need more games. 82 games is fine. I don't need less games. That's all. Maybe extend the season if you don't want to play all these back-to-back games. Make it an extra month. Baseball lasts for eight months. Come on. Come on. But I don't know. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, Should they make less games? Should they make more games? And are the players going to be willing to take less money if (laughs) if they are going to play less games? Well, don't they get paid, like, somewhat based off of games played? Sort of. I mean, they kind of get a salary. But, they get a salary, but it's not, I thought it was like divvied up and said, like, oh, we get this much. Yeah, they get game, game checks. They, they get game checks. But then again, if you have less games, less game checks, I mean, I'm yeah, not going so to pay you more money to play right? less games. I'm not going to pay LeBron more money to play less games. That's I'm going to pay him more money per game. But less mm, money overall. Jerk. No, no, I don't like it. Just agree with me in comments down below that you like 82 games in a season. And if you don't want to agree with me, fine. Just put it down there what you think, and if you have a good argument, I probably won't agree with you. And now you'll know how it feels. A good round <laughs> 40 games. That's all I need. 40 games? Well, you don't watch the games like I watch the games. See, that's, because that's it a, doesn't that's... matter. Like, there's 82 games. I only need to watch, like, it matters. three a year. It, it doesn't matters. matter. 
But uh, hit us up. Let us know what you think. Comments down below. Of course, at Words to My Face on Twitter. Words to My Face at gmail.com. Of course, Facebook and Google Plus. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. So let's take that and roll that over to the next subject, which will be baseball. Dun, 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 dun. That's the football team. Sorry. And I don't really want to talk much baseball. It kind of bummed me out. First, the Nationals get swept out of their series. Yep. And then the Orioles get swept out of their series. So yeah, we were hoping for there to be a uh, na- you know belt. Parkway, wave. Parthenon. Mm. Nope. Of uh, yeah, that. Yeah, Parkway Orioles. Parthenon. That's that. That was the consensus. <laughs> that was what we were gonna go with. I know the Parthenon's not really anything but you know a building, but hey, that's what we were gonna go with. But yeah, so the Orioles just got killed by the Royals. Uh, they lost four to nothing. Um, their bats never showed up was the one big thing. They didn't hit home runs. I think they might have had two home runs in the whole series, which they led the league in home runs. Their pitching wasn't horrible. Most of these games were run one run games, but the Royals know how to win those. Now they have the Royals actually have won all eight of their playoff games so far. Their one wild card game, three in the LDS series. There's and just the something behind there. the Royals this year because you know, they haven't been to the playoffs in in what 29 years. Yeah, so they're kind of the team of destiny. And right now, the Cardinals and Giants are playing, so we'll see what happens there. But it was just really disappointing. I wanted to see something more out of the Orioles. Um, even if they didn't win, I wanted to see them win a couple games because a competitive yeah, better series. Better than a sweep. Especially yeah. with how well they did this season. Like, how how does that drop off so dramatically um, in the playoffs? Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, we talked about this earlier. The reason the Royals made it to the playoffs was because they had this amazing defense. And you really don't hear about it except for pitching being, if you consider that defense, defense winning baseball games. But that's what happened with the Royals. I mean, they kept everything in the park, and their guys didn't make any mistakes. And when you don't make any mistakes, they ran the bases well. They did the little things to get the one run, the two runs in there. I guess you win the games in the playoffs because it's, you know, going to be closer. You're playing against a higher level of competition. And, you know, whereas the Orioles against the Tigers seem to score eight runs every eighth inning, they didn't do that against the Royals. So, you know, mm. it's kind of disappointing. But, yeah, the Giants are up on the cards. Now, the Giants have won. They won in 2010 and 2012. I believe the Cardinals won in, like, 2009, 2011. So you're looking at two of the bigger heavyweights. But it looks like the Giants are going to kind of end that series pretty soon. So we're going to see a Royals and Giants uh, su- uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> World, World series. series. Yeah, I knew that was right. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let us know what you think. It's kind of disappointing. I don't really want to talk baseball anymore. Stupid baseball. Come on, Brian. It's okay. There's Stupid. always next year. Stupid baseball. No, there's not for the Orioles because you know the New York Yankees are, aren't going to have that bad of a season. Or I should say the Red Sox are not going to have a horrible season again next year. And the Yankees are only going to get better because they're going to buy everybody out there. So, stupid baseball. I don't know who you're still rooting for that's in it. Do you want to see the Royals win because it has been 29 years since they've been in there? But, I don't know. Let us know in the comments down below. Or don't. Stupid baseball. Okay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, of course, wordsmyface.com, at wordsmyface on Twitter, Google Plus or Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. And let's move into our favorite subject of every night. There's never a night that this isn't our favorite subject, and that is the NFL. And let's start it off with, um, I'm going to call this ankle twist, twisting gate, because I'm from D.C., so everything that's you know, kind of controversial. I call it gate something. And that is calling everything gate. It's getting annoying. We got to think of something uh, a little bit better than that. Nope. I'm going to call it gate. Ankle twisting gate is what I'm going to call it. (laughs) But then that is Vontez Perfect. That's a very interesting name too. He is a linebacker for the Cincinnati Bengals. This past weekend, he was caught very, very blatantly at the end of tackles, twisting, violently twisting the ankles of players that were down on the ground. First, he did it to Cam Newton, kind of tackled Cam Newton by the legs. While he was rolling up, you see him go twisting his ankle the wrong way, trying, looking, it looked like he was trying to intentionally hurt Cam Newton. And then, later on in the game, did the same thing and actually did hurt Greg Olson, the tight end. And, I mean, it wasn't even close. Like, remember a couple months ago when we talked about J.R. Smith untying somebody's shoelaces at the free throw line? That's funny. Twisting and trying to intentionally hurt another player is just, it's just wrong. I mean, how did this guy not get so the many chainsaw? 
because because Jameis Winston did something stupid. So does yeah, this guy. Stupid. Like this guy is doing something. Yeah, he did something stupid. Not... This guy is doing something intentionally. Like just it's more malicious. Oh, that than stupid. Yeah, this is vicious. Vicious is what you really want to go after. Stupid will take care of itself. It'll yeah. stupid itself out. Yeah, this guy. Know. This guy needs some Chewbacca to to come after him. <laughs> I mean, what do you think, Chewbacca? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you heard him. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but it just it was it was kind of ridiculous. Now he got fined twenty five thousand dollars by the NFL, and he is going to be appealing it. Which uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to appeal it because maybe he'll get five thousand dollars or something like that knocked off. But I just think that somebody else should like take him out. Like you're gonna see one of these offensive players. Twenty five thousand dollars for for trying to intentionally twist the ankles of two other players, including. Like some high end players, like Cam just Newton, from yeah. a business perspective, you're trying to cost someone a lot of money. Yeah. And let alone the fact that you're trying to twist a bunch of guys' ankles. Like, yeah, no, no and who I'm it all is. for. I know injuries happen in the NFL. It is a violent sport. It is very physical. These guys are hitting each other, but they don't intentionally do it. Like, exactly. You're not intentionally trying to break after somebody. the game after the play and everything. <laughs> So it was just kind of ridiculous. And uh, Vonta is perfect. I hope you are subject to a chop block. And if you don't know what a chop block is, that is where you are being blocked by one person and somebody comes and cuts your legs out from underneath you. Um, and actually, I don't wish that on it because that could probably hurt really bad too. But this yeah, is I just, just ridiculous. I, I think I mean, that he on. should get worse than 25000 He should be personally. suspended if you ask me. I really think he Absolutely should be suspended. suspended. Uh, and he should lose his game check, which would probably be between two hundred and five hundred thousand dollars you know, because what he was doing was trying to hurt another player. And really, come on, I, I'm surprised that the players and he should you play need... for their uh, the, the medical bills. Yeah, because he did hurt too. one player, didn't he? So yeah, he did, but I don't know how seriously, but he did hurt him. Yeah, so um, whatever it is. And it's funny that the oh, NFLPA, you know, the Players Association, is like standing behind him, like helping him this appeal. Is a player this. on player thing, like yeah, just... that's what I'm saying. It's like wh- no, don't. You We're got not two help guys. You. You're trying to hurt some of our other guys. Like, as opposed to one. <laughs> you're hurting other players. It's not the league against you. It's you against other players, and the league is kind of telling you, no, you're not allowed to do that. So, maybe, maybe the players' association should be, should be uh, fining him or whatever if they have the power to do that. No, they don't. They do not. A union doesn't have the power. Well, I guess they might. They, they might. could kick him out. Wouldn't that be interesting if they kicked him out of the union? Would he be allowed to play? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if the NFL's locked in. I thought that they were a lock in. Uh, uh, league that required you to be part of the union, but I don't know. That'd be interesting. I don't know. Let us know what you think. Hit us up. Comments down below. Uh, should be should he be punished more? Should he be punished less? Uh, hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at what's my face on Twitter. What's my face at gmail.com and Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Let's move it on to uh, some injury updates. And it looks like Calvin Johnson will be missing this week again. Um, and so for all you people who own him in your fantasy league. This guy here and drafted him in the first round this guy right here and he's really killing your team yeah I'm sorry I feel your pain I feel your pain um, and yeah well, that's all the injury news I really got for you so that's not bad that's not a bad week other yeah, than... I'm sure there's other injuries yeah. out there but I think he's the biggest highest profile um, that you know that's the new there were story. there were a lot of guys that had been pretty big um, players that were injured that came back this last week, so I guess things are doing better. Mm, for, well, can always hope. You know, it's the NFL, though. It's a physical sport. So when know, you don't saying, like, it seems like a bunch to people... ankle off, usually yeah. you, you do better. So, and uh, let's roll that over into talking about Marvin Lewis. Uh, he is the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, he came out yesterday and kind of put his foot right in his mouth, said something pretty interesting, I thought. He said that concussions weren't more of a serious problem, the only reason people thought that they were lingering longer was because of media reports. So the media is really blowing this whole concussion thing out of proportion. Which I say to Marvin Lewis, yeah, not the best thing to say, dude. Like, yes, the media is hyping it up. You do hear a lot more about reporting it. But that is because, you know, we have better studies. We have better science. When you get a concussion, there's no such thing as a mild concussion, really. You get concussed. <laughs> you know, that's... It's like I got my arm cut. There's no such thing as a mild... Uh, okay, there is a mild cut. All right, bad example. But it's just it's just really stupid. And then you had the uh, the president of the, uh, the Players Association come out and say, yeah, yeah, you're a big dummy, Marvin Lewis. What are you doing? And, and especially with everything that's been going on with concussions, 
you know, the big lawsuit with the play, former players against the NFL, you know, the redesigning helmets, the new pr- concussion protocols that are out there, making light of something that is of serious issue is not the best thing to do if you're a head coach of a football team. Yeah, like, that makes me also, uh, I don't know, a little bit weary about being on the team if I was them, but, I mean, I know he doesn't control whether they get concussions or not, but obviously he's and not Honestly, the head coach doesn't have control on if they can go back in the game after they suffer a concussion-like injury because they have, like, NFL like doctors saying in on the sidelines saying, okay, it uh, looks like you got concussed. Come over here, do this test. Oh, nope, you're, you're not going in. You know, I mean, it's not the days of old where someone would get a concussion, run out for a play. They'd be like, how many fingers am I holding up? Uh, five. Okay, good enough. Go ahead back in. You know, they don't do that anymore because they realize that it has effects on their mental health, on their, you know, just, you know, leads to early Alzheimer's, I believe, you know, crazy, like, suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. So... Yeah, it's something that should be taken more seriously than it seems like Marvin Lewis is doing. Yeah, yeah, it can lead to just all kinds of problems. Like also, like I don't know, it, it seemed like if you you're screwing up the brain, some of the guys that I've seen that have had those problems for a long time, like they can't move properly after yeah. like really, I don't know, ten, fifteen years uh, after when they're still should be in pretty good health especially as athletes, as former athletes, they're doing pretty bad. So, yeah. Well, like I, I saw something about a tight end, uh, Ben Utech. Uh, you know, he wasn't a huge tight end. He was, did have some good years with Peyton Manning and then played for the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, he's something like 35, and there's like years of his life that he cannot remember anymore. So, <laughs> uh, you know, let's, let's take that stuff a little more seriously than you're doing there, Marvin Lewis. So but let's move it on. It's more happy news. And let's talk about Peyton Manning. Yeah, he's about two touchdowns away from tying Brett Favre's 508 touchdowns thrown in a career. So it's going to be interesting this weekend. Uh, that sounds to me like it's pretty much guaranteed that he's going to surpass it probably next game with how he's been playing. But I mean, at, at least, least next he, next two games. Almost guaranteed to tie it this game and beat it the next week if he doesn't beat it this week. So... That'll be an interesting game to watch, so tune into that. Uh, Peyton Manning, in my opinion, is the greatest quarterback of all time. Uh, I know he doesn't have the Super Bowls necessarily to back it up. He doesn't have the you know the Super Bowls like Tom Brady or Joe Montana or uh, you know quarterback. I was going to say Terry Bradshaw because he has a lot of Super Bowls, but nobody considers him the best quarterback John of Elway. all time. And John Elway only has two, so yeah. Yeah, but he was in more too. Well, it's, it's he was about Peyton Manning's been in about as many. So, um, yeah. So I mean, this is just a guy who's always doesn't matter what system he's in. He's kind of like that offensive coordinator slash head coach slash quarterback. You know, he just if you have him on your team, you just say, okay, how do you want to run this offense? Okay, do that. <laughs> you know, and he does it. So, and he's he's like 38 years old, and he's still playing at a incredibly high level. So. He just shows what can happen if you don't get concussions. Marvin Lewis. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know. Concussion, I guess. Like. I, I'm sure he's had his fair share of concussions. I, he did have uh, neck injuries, and so I'm sure some sort of concussion went with that. Um, but yeah. And let's move it on to the last NFL topic of the night. And this one is kind of funny to me. And I'm talking about Joseph Randall, uh, the Cowboys' backup running back. So. He's not, you know, DeMarco Murray, who's been setting the league on fire this year. Um, but he was fined one week of pay, which equivalates out to about $29,000 for shoplifting, uh, for being arrested for shoplifting at a mall where he's attempted to steal underwear and cologne. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he wanted to steal what? underwear and cologne. And and, and th- I'm just going to put this out there. I'm pretty sure the Cowboys would give him free underwear and cologne if he asked for it. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty and, sure he could ask a company to give him free underwear and cologne, and they would do uh, it just so that they could say, oh, Marv, he uses it, and a yeah, well, player. I'm pretty sure he could have probably walked up to the counter and said, like, hey, I play for the Cowboys. And they would be like, Hey, let's give you everything you want, even though you can yeah. afford everything in this store. Well, I mean, he's not that high profile of a player. He only makes about five hundred thousand dollars. That's a why year, I said so. he doesn't say his name. He just says he yeah. plays for the Cowboys and proves there it. You <laughs> uh, there you go. But 
It's just funny. He he's, like the charge is stealing something between fifty and five hundred dollars. So it wasn't that expensive underwear or cologne. And I don't know how expensive underwear and cologne can well, get. Five hundred dollars for underwear and cologne would be kind of high. between five hundred and fifty and five hundred. Between yeah. fifty and five hundred. That was you know the charge. So let's say he stole seventy five dollars worth of stuff. Really, you lost twenty nine thousand dollars because you weren't smart enough to go. And just pay seventy five dollars. I mean, you gotta think that obviously this wasn't about saving money. He doesn't need to save money. This is something else with the guy, like I don't know, kleptomaniac, or just Mm -hmm. thought like needed the thrill of seeing if he could get away with it. I don't know, but it just doesn't sound. I I just highly doubt that he was hurting for money and needed to needed to to steal underwear and cologne. You know. I mean, maybe if it was, like, diamond-encrusted underwear that was worth, like, $5 billion and he was trying to be, like, some crazy jewel thief, Tom's Crown Affair thing. But then still, you're stupid. This all st- right. It's just such a weird combination of things to... You know, like, it makes you start... Yeah. The wheels are spinning. The wheels Why are didn't spinning. he get the Chewbacca good. Should Chainsaw Award this week? There's been too many candidates this week, and... Yeah. Chewbacca's just going to be busy. Like run around. <laughs> Lots of people to chainsaw. Lots Unfortunately, of... and you see, we really hate seeing that, and so maybe we should like calm down to talk about it because there's always the risk that if Chewbacca starts chainsawing too much, he's just not gonna stop. He'll just snap and start seeing like all humans as the same because he has problems telling us apart. No, he won't. as it is. Yeah. He knows. You know, pretty soon he's just like he knows me and Chewbacca humans? are like this. Chewbacca would never chainsaw me. We're like this. Are you sure? Positive. At least as positive as you can be when you don't really speak the same language. How about that? <laughs> about that positive. But yeah, so let us know what you think about any of our NFL stories. Uh, hit us up in comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, Facebook and Google Plus. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. And now it's time to move on to the Words My Face Fantasy Football League updates. And I'm not very happy about this week. It was a bad week. So we'll start awesome. down the list. We had Team Hugel, who does – he is in number one with five wins and one loss. Beat Amingo 8, my baby, 110-98. Um, so relatively close game. Um, he really did it behind Giovanni Bernard, had 20 yards, 20, yeah, 20 yards, 137 yards and a touchdown for 21 points. And just his whole roster was pretty solid, it looks like. Um yeah, and even though Amigo ate my baby, had some good solid players out there. It just didn't quite add up for him. So, yeah, he, he fell to two and four. Then we have Redskin Potatoes beating Team Baker, one hundred five seventy five. So they Redskin Potatoes where they were towards the bottom of the list. They have clawed their way back up to being three and three. Um, and it's funny because both of those teams are going to get kicked out of our league next year because they both started players who didn't play. Bum, bum, bum. But uh, Redskin Potatoes was got all those points between behind 33 points from Cam Newton, really their big score. Now T. Y. Hilton was on Team Baker's team, who scored 28 points. So yeah, should start your lineups, Team Baker. Should start your lineups. Um, then we have Team Crawford beating Team T. Team Crawford was one and four. Now they're two and four. Ah, good for you. And if you don't know who Team Crawford was, that was sports aficionado Lucas, who was not doing so well this year, but he won. So, hey, we'll give it to him. And he was um, on the show last week. Yes, yes, he was. So go back and, and watch that if you don't know who he is. And now it was really the battle of the quarterbacks there because uh, Team T had Tom Brady score 30 points, but Team Crawford had Flacco score 32 behind five touchdowns. All throw Yeah, that was a crazy play. game. Yeah, pretty crazy. Even though Team T's defense had 20 points, which is an absurd amount. Team Crawford's defense had 17. So, yeah, you look a lot of high scoring going on there. Um, and then we'll have, uh, you know what? We have WMFM. M, 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 M. We have the Chainsaws beating Cowboys and Indians by the biggest margin of the week, 134 to 63. Um, yeah, that was a good game for you, Brendan. Is he frozen? I think he's frozen. Brendan's frozen right now, so he won't get to talk about how he won his game, but uh, he did it behind 28 points from Colin Kaepernick. Um, More Sanu, or Mohamed Sanu, that was a great pickup. He got 18 points for there. Arian Foster, 25 points as his flex player. 
Didn't even need his tight end to score any points. He had zero there. He still whooped him. Now, Cowboys and Indians did have 20 points out of DeMarco Murray, but not any more than nine out of any of their other players. So that's, yeah. And then we go to the, the saddest one of the week, and that is disgruntled Wookiees. That would be me. Lost to Team Tavener, 90-125. to And, yeah, I don't really want to talk about that game. I'm not going to do it. Just not going to talk about it. Okay, I'll talk about it. Philip Rivers came out and had a great game, 25 points. Then he had Matt Forte with 27 points. Where did that come from? Um, and I had Ben Tate with 19. And Brandon Oliver, really good waiver pickup. If you don't know, if he's not picked up in your league, pick him up. He is the San Diego Chargers running back with Ryan Matthews and Donald Brown going down. He's been a really, really solid pickup. So, yeah, I'm at 4-2, and two, so... We have a good amount of teams at four and two. I'm at four and two. Team Tavener's at four and two. Chainsaws are at four and two, and then we have one team at team five at five and one. And that's Team Hugo. So the top is kind of crowded, but it'll thin itself out over the next coming weeks because uh, I'm going to rise to the top and Brendan is going to fall. That's all I gotta say. That's how it happens. But uh, I think that's gonna do it for us tonight. And since Brendan is frozen and not here, we are gonna skip our traditional headbanging our way out of here. And just go with the... Good night, everybody! All right, I like headbang. I'll just headbang. Uh, headbang with no music. Uh, pretend you hear music. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they didn't hear any music. At least I messed up my hair for you guys again. I always do that. You know, got to throw something out for the fans. All right, everybody. See